Her Sports AAL Rugby Show, brought to you by Energia. Think of the possibilities. So we are now 30 years uh, as a women's team here in Blackrock. The first team was uh, started in 1992 by Steve Bashup, who was a former All Black, and his partner, uh, Sue. He was over here playing for the year. It was after the 1991 World Cup. His wife played, she was a Black Fern, and she came to the club and she realised that this was a good setup. They talked about putting a team together here, so they had three coaches come down. One was Alain Roland, and the other was uh, Philip Doyle and uh, Steve Bashup, Bash, as they called him. And that's where it all began. So I played my first game of rugby after one training session against uh, the, a, a team in Nina. So that was kind of how I got into it and stick, stuck with it. And how did you find that? I know we did an interview with Ema before and she said she was practicing tackling in like the hotel rooms. Like how did you find the whole kind of physicality and everything that rugby brings? I think for my first year playing in Limerick, I didn't touch a ball as in I was just there to support people and like be a, a tip option, which I never wanted the ball. Um, and I remember I got the ball in the final, I was like, oh, here we go. So uh, it's run like no one's, no one's watching. So that was kind of the first introduction to it. Tackling and stuff was like be a speed bump <laughs> more than anything else. My sister played here and um, she started in that in that pioneering team. She went on to be in the first Irish side as well. Um, and uh, then eventually I decided to give rugby a go in my 30s. And um, here I am now still helping run the women's side of the club. So I kept coming to train and they're like, oh yeah, we'll have a second team. They're coming, they're coming, they're coming. No second team ever appeared. So I ended up playing AIL then in my first year. And I arrived to the club as a forward and I played in the backs because they were short numbers. Uh, so that's how I became a back. Um, so that was kind of the introduction to rugby in Blackrock. And I believe you received an award last week um, for longest serving captain. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't, didn't realise how long I had been captain in the club until um, our manager, Jen Moore, said, how long are you captain? I thought it was like four years. It was seven. <laughs> um, Jen was talking about the kind of family community and camaraderie that rugby brings but also being a part of Black Rock like can you tell us more about that? So for me uh, your club is your family it's your community it's where you come and you learn and um, you have so many players here who play international you have players who come down here because they've just moved to Dublin and they know nobody that's a sport does for you and that's what this club provides for people is a network of people a group of people that can either help you out when you're stuck or be great cracking a night out and that's the the beauty of, of this club for me and it has been for the past number of years. I've never seen the same kind of camaraderie as you do um, when you have a, a rugby team because you literally are putting your bodies on the line um, for your teammate and that creates a bond that I haven't seen in other sports. So the fir very first team still hang out all the time. Uh, they call themselves the Rockettes at the time and uh, my, my own sister went through cancer last year and they were there supporting her every single week. They gave her, they had a swim for her down in Kalani Beach. They went over to Mayo when she had a big festival on, well, it wasn't a big festival, but it was a big celebration of, of life. And they came in their dro droves to support her. And that was sort of the bond that they created in the, in the 90s. And you can see, you can see that in rugby teams. And I can see it happening now with the, with the current squad. They're, they're a very special bunch. And in terms of that culture around the club and giving back to the players, like how do you kind of find that in Black Rock? Oh, it's great. Like, it's really good. Um, our AAL team and our Jays team, like, we're always training together, but then we're off the pitch together, you know, doing sea swims or, you know, having a pint in the bar afterwards. Like, it's really good because um, we all have different goals. We're all coming down here for different reasons. Some of us might have had a really stressful day in work. Some of us might have, you know, failed or passed a college exam. Like, we all kind of find that common ground when we get onto the rugby pitch. There's actually a stat that twice as many girls drop out of sport than boys by the age of 14. What kind of advice would you give them to stay on? Yeah, I think sport is is massively important just from a, I, I feel from a happiness perspective, like it, it gives you so much that you don't get in other aspects of life, but it also gives you silly things like time management. Like you have to be able to balance, you know, work or school and coming down to a training session and your gym. Like it gives you those kind of skills as well. So sport is a lot more than just coming out and passing a ball. As far as dropping out, like finding finding your family is is what matters, is, is what is gonna help those girls stay in or, or boys stay in the sport um, for longer. Because once you feel like you belong somewhere, you're gonna be more inclined to keep coming down. And that's what Black Rock tries to foster. In terms of the standard, like you've been playing since 2010, 
have you seen it progress? Have you seen things change? Of course, there's a massive change in, in rugby, but you've, I've always played alongside internationals. It's something that you just get when you, you come to Blackrock and they've a certain standard. And um, the, across the board, the AIL has got better, but the standard that you get when you come to this club has always been quite high. There's also a lot of internationals in the squad at the moment and previous internationals as well. Kind of, what are the training sessions like in terms of intensity and physicality? So the quality and the calibre of players here is going to make you a better player. So it's important to realise that when you're training, you're training to perform and you're training to learn and you have to take a little bit of insight. Yes, the coaches are important, but here you've got high quality players that can help you um, improve your own game as well. So the intensity is here, but also there's a bit of, you can have a bit of fun as well, but you're here to learn too. I know you had mentioned there that you're injured. Like, how do you manage the mental side of you know being injured and you know staying positive? Yeah. Um, well, so for me, the minis were a large part of that. Like coming down and being able to still do that role to a hundred percent. But beyond that, we've had a brilliant setup this year with um, like we gym together a lot more regularly than we would have ever gymmed together before. So I found that outlet has been really good for me because I'm still able to come in and do a lot of stuff. Like other than that, like I, I come out and set cones out. Like I still am very involved in it and that has helped me from the mental side. Now there have been days where I, you know, you just do need to step back and when you're injured, being able to, to do that at the right time and to do what's right for yourself is, is really important. And um, Blackrock are flying high in the AL at the moment, kind of. What are the hopes for, for, for the remainder of the season? Yeah, like, I mean, it's incredible to watch. It'd be even more incredible to be a part of all the matches, but um, like we set our, our boots on the ground every every match to win and i think that's going to be you know that's what we're driving towards that's what we're working for and like the girls they're working hard so hopefully we see good results coming forward and you had mentioned that there's been a, like ups and downs inevitably with sport how do you pick yourself up and go again i know last year you got to the final but didn't quite get over the line like how does that drive you and how does the team come together and go again that's not the worst down that i've had in black rock like my first year we lost with 18 l to ul like it comes in ebbs and flows, like it's a cycle. Um, teams do well for a couple of years and then they have a blip. Some people leave, some people come. Um, so losing the final hasn't been the low light of uh, Blackrock, but you always want to progress, you want to get better. And like we took last year, and but last year's last year, this year's this year. So who knows what's, what's going to happen over the next few weeks. We still have one game left, we have a semi final to get over before we even think about a final. So uh, we're just looking to build on last year's performance and continue on. How have you seen things change since, you know, your very first memories in the club? Um, the, the women's team are, are recognised as, as there's, the, well, there's three senior teams in the club. It's, it's the women, uh, the men's and the, the 20s. Um, and that's how things are equally spread out in terms of pitch, um, pitch time, gym time, s &C, all that sort of thing. Um, that wouldn't have been the case back in the day where they were kind of bartering for you know, a Sunday at 9 a.m. to get a training slot or whenever the, the training sessions were. But now we've got a lovely changing room. We've just got bathrooms put in, um, which was a big bone of contention for a long time. Um, and uh, the club are fully behind the women's team. So um, at the moment we have our own dedicated s &C. The girls all have their GPS units. We monitor that kind of thing. Um, we have a physio that comes in every week for a clinic. We have physio games, obviously, in that. So the game is as professional as possible, as, as we can possibly do it without the finances. Um, and all of that comes really from the support of the club and we've got a good sponsor as well who, who helps out the club. Yeah, and can you tell us more about that kind of attitude towards the women's team? I know when you go to other clubs in different sports, you do hear, say, the women's senior teams being kicked off the pitches for under 14 boys and that kind of thing. So how important kind of is that from getting that buy-in from the committee and the rest of the club? Yeah, they're, they're, they're very much behind us. Um, so we're, we're seeing, we operate as one club. Um, there's one director of rugby, that's Mick Harty, um, and he oversees like the rugby side of the house. Um, I obviously have the input from the women's side, but we work very, very closely together in that there's, there's no kind of second class citizen here. I mean, in terms of, of kit allocation, all that sort of thing, it's all equally spread out. Um, so in that, in that sense, there's, um, there's full backing from the exec. Um, and from the club members. Um, you see great crowds here now at the weekends um, supporting the team and the best days in the club are when we have the double headers, when we have like a men's game and then a women's game. Um, and, and even last weekend, uh, the men had a great win here here at home and, and the women had a very good win away, but we all came back here and there was, you know, celebrations all around. You know. 
that's the difference now is, is it's seen is, it's just another team in the club it's not the women's team or it's not anything else it's a team of BlackRock Her Sports AAL Rugby Show brought to you by Energia think of the possibilities